Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Ungodly Geeks Podcast and another entry in our series, The Ten List. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. And I'm Ron. And today we're going to be talking about games that were disappointing to us uh, as individuals. Uh, now, Keep in mind that when we're discussing this, we're not necessarily doing top 10 or anything like that. These are just games that maybe they didn't live up to the hype, or maybe they just weren't as good as they were promised. Maybe they didn't live up to the legacy of a series. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start. And the first game for me is going to be Doom 3. Now, the game I thought was good, but when it comes in the context of Doom, it's just, it's not good in my honest opinion and and a lot of people like to hate on doom 3 i'm not necessarily going to hate on it but you know you look at doom it's always been a fast-paced corridor shooter and doom 3 turns more into a fusion of like quake 2 and resident evil like survival horror right but as awesome as those two games sound fused these this, this game just doesn't pull it off well um, they rely a lot on jump scares, which I hate. Yeah. And yeah. for me personally, the game kind of gets boring after a while. No duct tape in space. Yeah, it's like... It, <laughs> <laughs> God, I hated that flashlight. Uh, oh, the flashlight was terrible. Yeah. Um, they fixed it in the BFG edition, thankfully, but mm. it was still it was still bad. Um, but for me, the, the game was just... It was slow. It was kind of weird. The storyline... I'm not even 100% sure of what's going on because I'll be honest with you guys, I can't complete the game. Um, mm-hmm. I get so far into it and then I just get bored with it. And I've never been I, – like I've completed Doom. I've yeah. completed Ultimate Doom. I've completed Doom 2. I've completed the Plutonia Project, the TNT pro- the Evolution. So I've completed mainline Doom games, which I guess it could be argued that the other those the last two aren't mainline Doom games. Um, but I, I've, I've done this. I play Doom still with mods and shit, Project Brutality and shit like that. But for some reason, Doom 3 just can't, it can't get me there. Yeah. It yeah. can't, it, it just can't capture my innate curiosity like the other games can. And so I'm, I just kind of get bored with it. I don't even know how far into the game I get when I get bored with it. It's uh, I remember picking it up when it came out for the Xbox. I never played the PC version, mm-hmm. but eventually they yeah, released it on I the never Xbox. Got to play it because I was a console kid, right. and, I, and I was a PS2 kid. Right. Yeah. On top of that, so I never got to play it. Always um, wanted to. It looked cool as fuck. Yeah. I mean, I like I said, I love the concept. The game looks good, even even today. I say, I mean, yeah, it's out. It's a little dated, of course, but the game. I still think the game looks good. It plays well. It has good controls, in my honest opinion, because it's just it's just your standard first person shooter on the PC. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think it kind of is the forefather to the modern horror game. Outlast. Um... Uh, all these other games that I'm not I'm not a huge fan of them, but they've got a massive following. Right, and that was kind of the way that this game starts off for a long time. You are just a dude going about doing down dark corridors. Um, if there's a fucking dark hallway to your right, you can be pretty sure something's gonna pop out and scare the shit out of you. Or yeah, I mean, after a uh, while, it just gets repetitive. You see, you see, you have imps crawling out of the pipes. I don't know and shit. Like, much just, about eh. the story. I caught the ending, but is that Doom guy? Yes, he, it's, yeah. it's okay. He does um, not look like this bad. He just looks like you're a, normal a random guy. security guard. Yeah, you're, the you're ending, like um, a marine. The ending was really I, I, weird. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure about. Like the canon and where it necessarily takes place. I think it's outside. But of um, the ending, these it people is, just it come is, in and breach and find him well, laying there it's in, a, in, in the dark. I, if it's on the Doom timeline, I actually think Doom Three happens before the original Doom. But that would don't quote me, me on that. I'm not 100 yeah, percent sure. I I'm a little fuzzy on it. I haven't like played I said, any Dooms. I played Doom One and Two, the originals, right. earlier this year. <laughs> just play those and then play Doom or 2016, and that's all you need. You're oh, fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, uh, that's the only reason why I even own the BFG edition on Steam is just so I could have the original two games mm-hmm. so I could mod them. I mean, it was it was ten bucks. I got three games for ten bucks, or I could have yeah. had the original Doom three for seven fifty. I'm like, it's no brainer. If the entire game was more like the ending when you finally get to hell, uh, it would have been the game you wanted. Right. When you get to hell, when you actually start fighting, and it turns almost into a frantic shooter right. like Doom should be. 
uh, it's almost a completely different game. Like, right. I still remember the final boss fight was fucking fun because it's just demons coming out at you all over the place. You're throwing this that part the did, cube that at part, uh, the boss. That, that, that yeah, part the soul did cube. look pretty yeah. doomish. It does. It, well, yeah, like, yeah. It looked fast. You're spraying bullets. Right. I mean, and it I've only ever. It is what the new Doom was. I've only was, ever experienced that game, like that part of the game. I've only ever experienced that through YouTube. Yeah, videos. I can imagine I they probably didn't give you, like, the, those abilities like set you loose yeah. like that until towards the end. Yeah, of the I don't. Game. I don't know what the choice was to slow it down so much, and you would get these moments of frantic shooting, and then it goes back well, to they, plod they, through the corridor with your flashlight. They had this right, new technology. Which, yeah, the lighting was amazing, at but the, at their disposal, yeah, it was so. just it was just it, it just wasn't good for me. Yeah, so I mean, I that's about that's that. about all I have to say on it. It was it was it was just too slow paced. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I'm one of those people. I like Final Fantasy and shit, or grinding, and I lo- I don't mind that shit. But for some reason, this game, like I said, it, it was such a departure from Doom's core gameplay, and I'm like, I can't do it. Yeah. So I, I get, I get, I don't even know how far I get, but I know I've never left the Mars facility at all. Mm-hmm. All right. So who wants to go next? Um, I'll go next. All right. Uh, Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was really excited for it. Uh, I'm obsessed with Mass Effect, and uh, who doesn't love Halo, developed by Bungie? Um, I, I, I'm love not a Halo team. fan, but um, I'm not going to diss it either. I mean, <laughs> right? Like it's fun sci-fi, right? Um, I expected to find like a nice sweet spot in the middle, and it didn't do that at all. <laughs> um, there was no campaign really to speak of. It was only like. A seven, eight-hour campaign, right. and it was so, like, incomplete and forgettable that it felt like a, a two-hour campaign that you never really, nothing of substance ever really happened. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the campaign was really horrible. It was forgettable and incomplete. Um, and never really, it, it like set things up with characters, never filled in any of those gaps. Yeah. Uh, never explained anything. You get to the end, it just ends. Ugh. It felt like an afterthought. I mean, the, the shooter mechanics were really polished and felt good. It felt fun. It was fun to shoot things, but, but which that's is the all most the... important thing in a shooter. But, yeah. Yeah, but, but then you get into all the other shit with like raids in the beginning where, if I remember right, pretty fucked up, yeah. and the loot drops totally fuck up, multi fucked up multiplayer oh, God, for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, something like I, I, I never played it, but I, I always, I kind of played it vicariously through you guys. And like the most memorable thing for me was when Ron just a few days ago reminded me that you guys sat in front of a cave for two hours and <laughs> shot yeah, a bunch of enemies, shooting. and just that was the most fun hole. you had had with the game. <laughs> that, like, that is, that's yeah. That was the most fun. <laughs> <I've played. laughs> Probably the worst loot system I've ever played in a game. Yeah. Fucking no. like you find got... something and go and get it decoded. Right. And it turns into like a basic. You could kill a thousand you. enemies. You'd get, you'd get the fucking base drop. I like if. if Insulting. I, I kind of yeah. wish that they would have gone the Borderlands. Just copy Borderlands loot system. It seems like they almost yeah. wanted to copy a lot from Borderlands and just never got there. Yeah. It was with almost, uh, the guns and shit. It's like, like a great value Borderlands. It's it's all it feels unfinished, and it's supposed to be an MMO. Mm-hmm. And it was like at launch, just a fucking what? Why? Why am I playing this? What's supposed to keep me entertained? Right. And like the the class, the armor armor for each for each class was really fucked up. The inventory, all that yeah. shit. You have to earn sunshine essentially. The crucible was like, I hear people. I've I've read like uh, like people seem to like the crucible i didn't mm-hmm. like it there's like eight people there and they're all just you know sitting on the ground and nothing nothing like they build it as like this big hub where all this shit's going to be going on yeah. and it's yeah. just nothing Ugh. at all um uh, that sounds positively fantastic. It had Dinklage going for it, and then they took him out. <laughs> why? why? Oh, yeah, because he was so – he sounded so, so bored. <laughs> yeah, the, he, they're like, you're a robot, and he sounded robotic. And they, didn't want that, and they had a problem with it. Uh, you you should have told him, you're a robot, 
but you play Peter Dinklage. Yeah. So just be Peter Dinklage and it'll be okay. It, yeah, <laughs> I just put a lot of time into that game and I was left uh, – I fucking – I hated that game. It's yeah, a game that was made to it. sell you the same game five times through DLC. Right. It was an incomplete bullshit game like like fucking um, uh, Battlefront. The, the new Battlefront was half a game on release, and if you, you could even say that much. And then you had to pay fifty dollars after you paid sixty to buy the game to, buy to the get the rest of game. the game. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <clears throat> it's it, it's one of those just awful. And I get people like it that wanted you know were fully willing to cash, shell out that cash for the whatever the king. The DLCs Taken and King stuff. or whatever. And it's like, no, at that point, I like, was, no, I'm waiting for the second one. I gotta yeah. say, I gotta say, like, I find it really amusing now when I, like, you know, we're at work and we walk by video games or whatever. You look in, like, the value game has been for, like, $20 or less or whatever. You can find Destiny with all of the its gold DLC. Edition, yeah. yeah. Every bit of its DLC for 20 bucks now. Yeah. And it's been what. I don't even think it's been long enough necessarily that a game would normally hit that stride. So it's it was been like a, what a year and a half or so. It's since been longer than that, I think. Two years maybe. But, so like yeah, uh, it's, it's like it's in two, for in an just MMO, two years. Yeah, it's in, surprising that it's yeah, that just, cheap for everything. In just two years, you've gone from AAA game to bargain bin trash. Yeah, that's like but, that's uh, amazing to me. But yeah, hopefully they learn their lessons in Destiny Two, Destiny Two like delivers where yeah. in the ways that the first one was supposed to it that's they got they got fill in they got fill in <laughs> the it has the fill in seal of approval yeah maybe hopefully but, uh, that means something yeah but hopefully because i want to be on board with it i was super on board with the first one i like jumped completely on board yeah I mean, from the day Destiny one Edition ps4 right. I, I mean was ready. Like, like the concept it, sounds it cool me down but so it's, they just didn't execute it well nope yeah. So I mean, I I, I I'm kind of looking forward to it, to this one too, though, because it does look good. I've seen some things, and maybe I I might want to try that, especially since it's supposed to be a PC port too. Just well, I don't know what the fuck happened with the the campaign with the story in the first one. Like at one point, you encounter the, the this like w- this like wise character on the crucible in the beginning of the game. Yeah, he's like, I could tell you all the things that happened. Oh, the uh, but I'm not going to. Like the obvious, like this dude's hiding shit is gonna turn out to be a bad guy. Nothing yeah. happens. Yeah. Nothing happens oh, yeah. in the story. <laughs> Nothing happens. Uh, okay, you, you wow. meet. It's like a, it's like the setup to. Uh, a movie, and then it never gets past the first act. Nothing, zero, is explained. Nothing is fleshed out. You have no fucking clue what's going on. That sounds absolutely at pathetic. all. Unless you pay another fifty nine ninety nine. Go yeah, fuck which, yourself. Which I, I never over my yeah. dead body. Right. No fuck though. Moving on. Yep. All right. So my first game is, in all honesty, probably the uh, one of the worst games I've ever paid full price for and biggest disappointments most absolute just bullshit games and that's aliens colonial marines now uh i i (laughs) had picked up the development of this game a little late like as soon as i heard it was coming out i was immediately fucking excited i love aliens i love that property i love the old avp games uh avp 2000 aliens in particular like yeah I mean, um, um, one thing you might want to look into, um, look into the Aliens Total Conversion mod for, for Doom. It's really fucking good. Yeah, I might have oh, to do that. Oh, it's really fucking but, good. Uh, but this game came out and was shown at E3 and everything, the tech demos, in, uh, in-game footage. It looks gorgeous. It I mean, looked amazing. The lighting was beautiful. The environment was beautiful. It looked like, oh my god, that ship is straight out of um, uh, Aliens. Um, oh, now I'm blanking on the name of the ship from Aliens, but you, you go, yeah, you, you go on, I think that's the Alien ship. That's Alien. But yeah, you go on know. the ship from Aliens, you're going to LV4. There's LV4, way too much to go through. LV426 was the first movie. Uh, yeah, Aliens too. Yeah, Aliens, too. Yeah, Aliens, yeah. Um, but oh, you're going to all it's these locations. Yeah. yeah. You're going to all these locations. I gotta locations. freshen up on my Alien lore, man, because yeah, oh, yeah. with, with fucking Covenant coming out. 
Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, got, it was supposed got, uh, to be the you got, you got sequel. Two weeks. <laughs> mm-hmm. And oh, I can't wait for that movie too. But this was supposed to yeah, be essentially canon. the sequel canon. to Aliens. H- Hicks is Hicks is supposed in to it. explain the fate it's of It's supposed Hicks. to be the story, um, like a continuation, and it dropped the ball on every single piece of. Uh, game development possible. The game looks nothing like that tech demo. It is fucking ugly. The Aliens AI is some of the worst enemy AI I've ever played in a video game. These yep. are supposed to be the ultimate hunters, and their AI can't even distinguish um, blocks and things uh, uh, Things they can't get around hit detection. They run on walls, but it's so awful your, and awkward. Your AI partners were just... Oh, God. They were, were awful dumb as too. bricks. In your way. Yeah. Like, uh, and then half the game you spent fighting people. No, yeah. motherfucker. I want to fight xenomorphs. I mean, that's the, it's and in the title. And you're fighting Yutani soldiers. It's in the yeah. title. Why wouldn't you give oh, me aliens? It's so fucking Some bad. Some funny business was going on with that. With with it was awful. The with development them in that game. With yeah, gearbox in that game. They blatantly lied about what the game was going to be. I think it was. And all then just after a... it released, they blamed the other developers. Allegedly, and, they right. took. Uh, they they outsourced development to a, another studio to uh, save money. Yeah, which essentially, okay. and then they took that money and put it towards Borderlands. Is all I it apparently is all just a huge ruse. And they knew to, they had a to shit give game. them more, you know, money to make their baby Borderlands yeah. too, their real yeah. baby. Yeah, Borderlands. I, I think I like I said before, if Borderlands wasn't as good as it was. I don't think Gearbox would still be around. They would be making shit like this. And, I mean, it made money, but I remember uh, playing the game the first way through, playing it co-op with friends, and we wanted to love it. We're playing it like, okay. Oh, God, I didn't beat that game. They're not bad. (laughs) It's it's, it's, it's aliens. Like, I kept shooting the pulse rifle because the one thing they got right was the sound effects. (laughs) And you kept getting that sound effects, and I get that little bit of nostalgia. You're like, fuck yeah. And when you get the smart gun and it just sounds right, it's like, yeah, maybe. No. No. no, Nothing. Mm, Nothing works. Randy Pitchford is a real (sighs) good salesman. (laughs) It was fun. Fucked. He sold that piece of shit. He should yeah. be a used car salesman because I'll bet he fucking clean up. Uh, clean one house. of the funniest things was going to GameStop after about three days of having that game, which I beat the entire campaign twice on the hardest difficulty one time, played it co-op, and played some of the multiplayer. The multiplayer was fucking awful. Taking that game to GameStop and having them laugh as I'm selling it, uh, trading it in for credit, and seeing about 40 other copies sitting there. On uh, behind their desk of all these people Damn. returning, he that said absolute garbage. Three days. He had the game for three days and completed it twice. Yeah, Come on, on the hardest difficulty. It was it was Damn. just fucking awful. I I uh, played it for about five hours right. in one sitting when I yeah. first first got. It. I was like, no, I can't even. Oh no, we play. I, play I can't. I'm not going to do this game. to myself. Yeah. Uh, literally, it, it's become a joke of a game. You can see where the glitches are so bad. They've edited it to look like um, Springtime Gal or whatever that song yeah. is. The, yeah. the fucking frog from Warner Brothers. I, I, I watch I watch a lot of Angry Joe's stuff. That was yeah. That was in one of his reviews. One of my favorite reviews of all of his was this game. Like everyone, everyone unanimously got together and we're like, we're gonna shit on this, right? Oh yeah, this deserves it, and absolutely tore this game I wanna, apart. Somebody find somebody. That that really loves aliens, colonial marines, and they can get Ugh. behind that game. <laughs> I, I that, that dude, wants to stand behind that. I'm game. I'm sure there are people who will uh, say it's a great game, but no. Oh, if if no. you like aliens, if I'm you like that franchise. Alien. I love aliens. Jesus right. Christ. Yeah, I mean, I've never played it, and I have Ugh. no intentions of ever playing it because not only is it as bad as you guys say it is, but I've also never been an aliens fan because for some reason it's never got into it growing up. But it's like I'm not a sadist, so I'm not <laughs> going to subject subject yeah. myself to that. I've heard that there are total overhaul mod, mods that have just recently come out. By the way, that that this game is that old, and it took them this long to overhaul the game that um, make it playable and make it more enjoyable campaign wise. Uh, maybe if I find it for a dollar on Steam one day, I might try that out because, uh, like I said, I fucking love the idea of playing a Colonial Marine and being. You know, a badass in space fighting the most badass creature in space. They know you do. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I know. Yep, yep, yep. They got my 60 bucks. They got they, you. They got you, buddy. <laughs> they got your money, bro. But you know what? <sighs> Hopefully one day we'll get a great Aliens game. 
Um, that essentially, and I even said it when talking to people when playing the game still, that that game killed all chances of another Aliens game for at least another five, six years. Yeah, well, because we, of how fucking awful that game is. We and got Isolation. Loss of Faith. It yeah, was, it Isolations was, was developed by somebody completely different. Yeah, that though. game was... And surprising. That game looked really interesting. That game so, was yeah. like a its own kind of... It's an alien too. game, not yeah. an aliens game, right. which is completely is fine. That it's it's that horror that oh my god, I'm going that to get is, fucking killed. That's how you you play for nostalgia, yeah. right? Everything right. was was perfectly done in isolation. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. I'm hope one day we can get a good aliens game, or hell, even do a good uh, AVP game. The last one was eh, okay, right. but not That's quite what I, what I wanted it to be. People kind of dug the multiplayer. Yeah, for that one. the multiplayer, uh, except for some exploits that made you invincible as a marine. Yeah, uh, was uh, <laughs> was, that, was fun. Uh, yep. Yeah, so that, that I, I honestly could probably talk shit about that game for hours, but uh, I won't do that here. So we'll yeah. go ahead and move on. Yeah, okay. So it's back to me, and for me, my second game, and this one actually took a little bit of thought. Uh, because you know, back when it first released, it was it was okay. It wasn't good, but for me, Castlevania '64 <laughs> is my is my next disappointing game. And uh, back when I was a kid, when it first released, it wasn't disappointing. It's one of those things I had to look back on and go, you know, I I was really let down by that game. Mm-hmm. Um, what you get is. Castlevania's first foray into 3D, which, okay, I can forgive you a little bit. It was on the Nintendo 64, which maybe back then was a graphical powerhouse, but it didn't last. And uh, I, I, I don't want to say I hate the game, but I definitely don't like it anymore. I think com- compared to other 3D games yeah. of the time, it first was, 3D it, games, it looked awful. It was bad. Yeah. Like, I, it looked fucking terrible. It looked really bad. You had shit character models. You had bland environments. You had terrible controls, terrible platforming. I don't even know what the fuck they were trying to do with the weapons. Um, I, I, I hate it. You don't play as a right. Belmont. No, you don't. Or... You play as two random randos, two randos who are also fighting Dracula. And it's like, <laughs> okay, that's cool. Who the fuck are these people? Where, yeah. Where's Where's Richter? Where's you know Where's Julie? Well, maybe not Julius. Julius didn't exist in, but you know Where's Richter? Where's Simon? You know Where's Trevor? Where are these Where are these iconic Belmont characters at? That's your bread and butter, right? And they, they, they I don't know how they screwed the pooch on this, but they totally did. Um, this is one of those another one of those games that I've never completed. Um, and this one though isn't because of boredom; it's because it's just a terrible game. Um, the last. Playing the last part of the game that I can remember, it's, you know, you're climbing, I believe it's the clock tower, and if your jumps aren't, like, 100% dead on, perfectly timed, perfectly aimed, you're fucking dying. Like, straight up. There is, it's like, it's like Dark Souls times 10 when it comes to, like, kind of just trying to get through an environment. Because, you know, you run through an environment... You get run over by a fucking boulder. You get knocked down the steps. You get run over by the same boulder. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that, except you're just getting, you're just doing, you're just going down a hole at the same spot every time because you didn't aim your jump right. And not to mention the controls are just bad. They're they're clumsy. They're just they're slow to respond. You can never quite aim in the direction you're going. You you kind of have to just. You kind of just have to guess and hope like hell you're right. God, old 3D platformers. Mm-hmm. Just I mean, terrible. I want to say that, but then you look at something like Super Mario 64. Mm-hmm. And you mean, it, it was it was Mario's first jump into 3D, and they did it. They nailed it. Yeah, they they totally nailed God, it. God, if 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 I couldn't I couldn't deal with young Ron could not deal with Super Mario 64's controls. <laughs> I would not, I would not have stood a chance with that game. But yeah, I yeah, I I can kind of see that. I um but but w- when you compare the two, mm-hmm. Super Mario 64 is like a million times better. Yeah. Cuz yeah. if you press, you know, you push forward, Mario goes forward, you know, you you push left while you're doing that, Mario will turn left. And in this game, like it's instant. Like it kind of should be with Mario, but for some reason with Castlevania, they went a more realistic approach, which okay, I kind of get, but it's just slow. You know, yeah. and it's just it's just bad. 
like I said, I don't know what the fuck they were trying to do with the weapons. One guy uses like a giant hunting knife or some shit. And <laughs> then you got the little girl who throws kunais or something. I don't even know anymore. Like it's so yeah. bad. It's and, almost like an afterthought of the series. Like they just kind of push it under a rug. I mean, it is definitely a game that gets a lot of hate, when, uh, and it's deserved. It's totally deserved. Around what? Around the sixty fourth timeline? Oh, 90, released, 97, 98. Like early? Was yeah, it it's, early it's pretty early. Type like, game because I can imagine like. You got Castlevania. That's that's a, a yeah. huge license. You want yeah. to get that out on your new system and yeah. maybe sell a few and yeah, consoles. It, it was it was there. It was really early on in the in the life cycle of the sixty four. Like it wasn't one of those things that released at the end of it. It was very early, Have which no is clue. why which is why I'm not. I don't want to be hard on it, but at the same time, when you look at other three D platformers at the time, there was no excuse in my opinion. Like, what, what are you guys doing? Yeah. And like I said, the environments were bland. Like the opening area is just empty. It's just you're just running along an empty cannon. And for me, the, the only one that really stands out is the clock tower, and that's the mansion. I, the mansion is heard. kind of cool, but it's it's also just kind of bland. I I hated that game. Now I'm like. Maybe not back then, but now I can say I hate this game. This game disappointed the you fuck out of me. Not alone. And and like the, I think the biggest part of that disappointment isn't necessarily the game itself. It's the fact that the game that I played before it is arguably one of the best games in the series. It is definitely one of the most loved. I went from Symphony of the Night to that pile of shit. And that's why, I think that's part of the reason why it's such a huge disappointment for me. It's just, it was just bad. Fuck Konami. Yeah. Fuck Konami. Fuck Konami. Thank you, Jim Sterling. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no, it, it's basically what it was, and <clears throat> but this is also back when they were still kind of okay. It's surprising it because Konami is one of those companies that generally back then, um, when they put something out, they made sure it was good. Yeah, they, but, they put but, all, everything into now it. Now they but, just wanted mm-hmm. to be a good pachinko. You know machine. the thing. Yeah, <laughs> now they want to make pachinko machines. You no, know, the thing that gets Damn me it. too is that it got <laughs> Nintendo seal of approval. Are you fucking approval. serious, Konami? <laughs> Are you? F- Fucking shitting me with run, that. With that, run, run, run! Don't get into this. I can't eat. I can't. What? <laughs> All right. Pachinko machines are right, really whatever. super popular in areas. Whatever. Fuck it. Oh fuck Konami. Yeah. Fuck you. Whatever Konami they want to do stand. now. <laughs> That's so. You know what though? On the plus side, that means they're not going to be ruining game franchises anymore. No, they're so. sh- they're shitting out a Metal Gear a Metal Gear game later this year. It's like Metal Gear Zombies or whatever the fuck. Yeah, it's like a, an ad, a, a, a fucking add on or some bullshit. I hope they is it, make is about it like, ten. Dollars is on it, it is it basically like Red Dead Redemption zombie? No, 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 it's it's multiplayer. Oh, okay, so it's more like Black Ops zombies. I think it's going to be man, like uh, what was that? You'd have to watch the trailer. I'm not okay. even entirely sure. Right, there might be gameplay out there. I don't know, but <laughs> it just I it just looked like Metal Gear Solid action zombies. I hate that they still they still own the license to. Uh, Castlevania, oh, they're never given. Well, that. yeah, that yeah. I mean, that was their IP. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I'm I'm reasonably God. sure that that was their baby. That was their creation. I mean, what uh, Lords of the Shadow two or was it the, three? Came yeah, out, I don't even what, remember. Two, three sequel. years ago, so it's oh. fairly recently. That was so fucking just absolutely Edge Lord. Actually, so that was that was a disappointing game, but I'm not gonna. I never played it, <laughs> so I, I, I can't I can't include it. Like I played the original Lord of Shadow, which I love. It's fucking great game. It's just the trailer, it's gorgeous. Don't play the game; just watch the trailer. It's gorgeous. It plays. It plays pretty well, yeah. um, given its limitations. The way they, and I think the way they limited it was clever. But so, but anyway, that's not what this is about. <laughs> Castlevania sixty four. Go fuck yourself. The Legacy of Darkness sequel. Go fuck yourself. You're just as bad. Yeah, Konami. Go fuck yourself. Right. Hashtag fuck Konami. Hashtag yeah. fuck Konami. All right, That's the name of the um, podcast. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we have it. All right. Uh, the next one I'm going to go with is The Order 1886. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, this one really hurt me. Yeah, no, Ron loved this uh, one. I decided beforehand that I was going to be f- jump I was going to jump fully on board mm-hmm. like I did with the original Mass Effect. Right. Just these games come along where I just I love everything I'm seeing. I'm like I'm buying the shit out of this game, right. yeah. and I am – I'm no doubt in my mind that I'm going to love it. That's thats thats what was going on with this one. It really seemed like it should have been right up my alley. It was single-player focused, like third-person action shooter, gorgeous. 
like this horror sci-fi monster game. Which so far, Ron has sold me on the game. Like, I, I'm already right? interested, you know? Yep. Werewolves just... Fucking. Werewolves in like London, right? It was gonna steampunk be in, London? Steampunk yeah, London. It looks like it was going to be a nice blend of, like, gothic horror mm-hmm. uh, sci-fi with, like, men in black. Right. Blended with Knights of the Round Table. Yeah, I'm, I'm sold. Let's play it. Uh, I really tried to love it, too. The story wasn't bad. It just wasn't that great either. I kind of liked what they were going for with the Knights of the Round Table meets Men in Black. You know, it's it's set in the, the gothic Victorian, like, foggy London, rainy right. London. Right. Well, London's always been like, rainy. Like, Blackwater was a cool idea. Like, right. mm-hmm. this, they drink this... this stuff called black water it like heals them makes them live for long periods of time like these guys are hundreds jump- and hundreds of years. jumping through time you're talking like the fountain of youth type shit yeah yeah the moment to moment gameplay felt pretty shallow and i'm not a frame rate snob but the frame rate was pretty bad the collectibles were awkward and like shoehorned into the levels so like collectibles you just you just it's like on the ground in front of you. You're going to step <laughs> on it. And then you pick it up and you like awkwardly pick it up and look at it. And you flip it over and look at the back of it and slowly flip. It's like they ripped that straight out of Resident it, Evil. I only like. Except it didn't. You didn't discover anything new when you looked at it. Yeah, I only like one. And it's because it was Sackboy and you're just flipping Sackboy around. <laughs> but, um, um. What is this? Yeah, the, I mean, the lichens were really cool. But after the first time you encounter one, you realize that there's there's no danger. Right. No. Like, the smaller ones just run around, play hide-and-seek until they rush you, and you can just... Shoot them in the face. If you're not a fucking idiot. You just blow them away. And they repeat the same fucking process over and over and over. And when you encounter a, a an elder lichen, they're bigger, it... The, the the it's the same it's, exact it's, boss it's, battle every it's, time. It's a quick time event. <sighs> every single time, it's the same. Right. Um, sounds trash. Okay. Uh, the boss. final boss. You play through the the campaign. You get to the final boss. Shit's going down. This the 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 elder lichen. Quick two, time event. <laughs> two hours into the game, you you encounter your first like elder. Yeah. Lichen. Yeah. The final boss plays exactly 100%, exactly the same. Uh, it's the same thing. That's so bad. The game just fell short in every fucking regard. Mm-hmm. It felt like an unpolished tech demo. I mean, yeah, it definitely looked very pretty. I was very disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> After playing that game, I like I was I'm it still bugs me like I wish that they would have nailed that game because the story that could be is a there. huge the story is so the cool. The story was actually like right. pretty good. I, I, I like the guy too. You play yeah. as he was pretty cool. I uh, wanted I want a book or it was, comic book series yeah. based on it. That's fair enough. I'd rather read a comic. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be okay. Give with me a comic, an order yeah. series. I don't know. There maybe there might be. <laughs> I still remember. Very well, could be. Um, they didn't release review copies of that game. Yeah, Gee, I uh, wonder why. which is a yeah, there's a big red Usually flag if they ever do that flag. with movies or video games. Um, so I remember the night that it came out, Ron and I both grabbed it, buying it. I bought a copy, and then later that night I go online and the absolute fucking shitstorm over this game. <laughs> I was, was so butthurt every time you so bring amazing. that up. I was like, I was yeah. like, I did not want to hear it because like I was I said, trying to I, I was you. so on board. I was yeah. like, dude, man. I mean, maybe this isn't. Maybe we don't want to spend sixty bucks. No, no, it's gonna be great. It was like fan- <laughs> I, had, I returned like, it that morning. <laughs> I had Phantom Menace disease, where like after you watch the Phantom Menace for the first yeah. time as a kid, you're like. That, that was, was pretty Star awesome. Wars. That was that was good. Just yeah, Star that was Wars. good. That was great. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. After a little time goes by, you're like, <laughs> that was shit. That fucking sucked. I still that was remember the worst we- movie ever. I remember like a week later when you brought the game in and just handed it to me like, here you you can borrow it. And just yeah. the look of <laughs> disappointment, like like the, the 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 hope and dreams over what this game could have been were had finally been ripped away from a small. It's child. like it was made for me, man. <laughs> oh man, the I story mean, even adds vampires. They never, they yeah, never do like, anything. I was, I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" There's vampires in this game, right? Because yeah. you know, oh, I mean, a, like I'm I'm a, I said, the I'm way you described guy. the game in that opening, oh, yeah. it's like I, I'm fucking sold. Like, let's buy it, let's play it, and then 
when you when I when I was sitting there and I was watching you play, and I started to realize this game is just a series of quick time events, and yeah. it's really really pretty, and they're selling it on the fact that it's really really pretty. It's like, but you mentioned uh, frame rates. Yeah, frame rates is a big thing. Okay, because that's that, that's something I should be in, worried about as a PC player. You shouldn't have to worry about frame rates as a console player because. All the consoles are the same. You should need just to, be locked. You need to design the, around that. The, you know? the final re- the release version of the game didn't look as good as what you'd seen before. Oh, God, it's no. like they made – they're like, okay, we really want to sell this PS4 as like a, a graphics powerhouse. So right. we need this game to look fucking amazing. So they yeah. built this amazing looking game and it didn't – it couldn't run smooth. Yeah. It's like they built this amazing, graphically impressive game, and then tried to make it a video game after the fact. After yeah. the, after making it a tech demo, yeah. And it's honestly really what it seems like because I remember those old uh, early trailers where he could, like bust through a wall with a werewolf and they're fighting and shit. Looked fucking fantastic. It's the same way. It's it was like a used car salesman. The like blimp, look at how awesome like this the, is. The, the the blimp level. You're like yeah. rappelling up the blimp. Like that's one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen in a video game. But it's right. me just. I'm not doing anything. I'm just pushing up. Yeah. To, yeah. To to or or down. To get down this blimp, the literally, blimp. I'm pushing my analog stick down. That's that's the gameplay. And that's all you <laughs> that, get. You that just situation. Push it, Look just at all the pretty it. and just push down. Push, the push most, down. The most simple thing they couldn't get right is just making a competent third person shooter. It was every it, any time you got into combat, it was not only just so repetitive; it felt the same. It wasn't really all that well done. Mediocre. Was, oh yes, <laughs> yes. In every way. <laughs> Mad Max. More Mad Max references. Yeah. Mediocre. All right. Uh, I, I think I think that's all we need to say about that. It will not go. To yeah, Valhalla. we don't need we don't need this pod to be an hour and fifty minutes. All right, go all ahead, right. Luke. Next next game. So for you. my next game is Arkham Knight. Uh, the oh, third, oh. uh, because I won't count the Arkham Origins game. Batman. <laughs> the third Arkham Batman Arkham game. Riddler puzzles. Yeah. The Riddler puzzles, the video game. Yeah. Um, so I Wait, was a huge fan. Let me stop you right there. Yeah. That actually sounds like a decent concept for like a puzzle type game. Oh, well, you'll great. love this game because aren't there like a hundred or something? Well, no, 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 no. What, I, what I'm saying is like, get, like if do you, every one. If you it just without release, having to go right, around without, and find them. Without the crap, like, like release like a Tetris style Batman game where it's just Riddler stuff. Hey, I had be fun. Cool. I had fun going around and finding all the Riddler puzzles in both the first Arkham but game fucking and <laughs> Arkham City. They're Me too. They're simple. But this one, they involve the Batmobile, and it's like, oh, wait a minute. Will. Oh, let me get this there. This is getting okay. into let me get there. territory, you're getting a little, even for comic books. Getting a little let me get there. So this game comes out. Track. I am absolutely, totally excited for it. I love uh, Batman Arkham. Uh, I loved Arkham City. They were fantastic games, both open world games. You got the best of what I feel Batman is. You got the stealth being that apps that 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 night that terror shadow. to criminals, that shadow in the stealth combat. You got the awesome fucking combat system that uh, has kind of been that and the uh, Assassin's Creed system where it's more reactionary. Uh, in the combat where you have to think about what you're doing, plan out your next move and stuff. Uh, it had all of those things uh, going for it. Uh, and then they absolutely shit the bed on porting it to the PC. That's oh, the God. first major problem this game had. It came out and uh, the console releases, you know, they, they, it's console. You make a game for a console, it should work well, period. Um, the PC release was fucking awful. It ran terribly for a majority of users. It looked awful. Uh, if you wanted it to run well, you had to turn off most of the graphical enhancements, turn it down to where it looked worse than the last game in the series. Um, it was a shit show. It was like, did you spend 50 cents tra- like making the PC port? What the hell is – what are you doing? It was on the on par with Ubisoft's terrible PC ports. I don't they know ports. what they did. <laughs> they don't. Like, they like, don't. <laughs> WB has admitted they spent 50 – like they spent an hour trying to port it to PC and just went, eh, we'll release it anyway. It's like 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 gameplay footage I've seen and videos, Jesus. YouTube videos. Yeah. It like, like if you guys have ever tried to run like GTA 4 on an <laughs> Intel – 
graphics chipset. <laughs> like you get missing textures. You can't see entire buildings. Yeah. Cars glitch out. So it's like I was sitting there watching some of the gameplay footage of people trying to point out like this is fucking this is fucking terrible. It's like that's what it reminded me of. Oh yeah. Trying to play GTA four on an Intel chipset. Like an Intel graphics co- chip. Uh, it's so, so fucking bad. You got glitchy textures. Yeah. You've got crashes. You've got you know, like like just entire missing buildings. A lot of the game is uh, – I mean it's, it's obviously based at night. Um, but you have rain that in in a, a working, running version of the game looks beautiful. And it's so great to run around in the rain. And in the PC port – it was fucking awful. It would just mm-hmm. lock your system up. It was. It kind of um, solidified the way Steam's return policy would end up working later on. And then <laughs> yeah. they end up offering returns, extending their return policy so that you could return that game even hours and hours after playing it, days after playing it, because it was that bad. They had to pull it from they the Steam marketplace yeah, for a few months because it was just so shit. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was such a huge like fuck you to people who wanted to you know play it on the PC that 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 part of it was a huge disappointing. Now in the game, when the game is running well, it does still have a lot of those things that made the Arkham games great: the combat, the stealth sections, the detective work as Batman. However, they also added one thing that I expected was going to be amazing: the Batmobile. You got to drive around Gotham in the Batmobile, which is if anybody who's as big of a, a, a fan of Batman as I am, that's fucking awesome. Not me. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be you, fucking awesome anyway. You Green Lantern bastard. But <laughs> it's it was like holy shit! I'm finally driving around. They even added this mechanic because Batman doesn't kill. That when you would run yeah. over criminals, it would stun them with a taser, which was fucking funny. And and I I mean it's that's dumb, but fuck it, go ahead. That's that's great. Uh, He's but, shooting them with bean bags, yeah. explosive <laughs> bean bags. Yeah. Later on, unfortunately, they add in this like tank battle system where you're fighting uh, uh, unmanned tanks from this army from the uh, the Arkham Knight, uh, and it's just it's awful. Like it, I mean, it's the first time you do it, it's like okay, I, I, yeah, all right. It's it's uh, just a really dumbed down like tank fucking game where you're stuck in one area you have to drive around and shoot these on uh these unmanned tanks that are their ai is really fucking bad because they'll aim in one direction and then you they get their targeting uh light that shines on you and then you just move over half an inch but they don't re-aim they shoot wherever they're fucking Mm. pointing so it's easy it's just really dumb and it's like okay glad that's over with Nope, you're forced to do it over and over and over again. There are a lot of times where you have to use the Batmobile to solve puzzles, which at first it, it you know it might it could be pretty cool. It could be you know an interesting way. After the no, 47th it's forty seventh time. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking shoehorned and forced in there, and it's just absolutely like it, it feels like it was just padding the game length and going from. Arkham City with that amazing story with the Joker, with all of that just fucking, that game is amazing, whether you buy the DLC or not, from beginning to end, all the stories of all the uh, rogues gallery of Batman that are added in there. I'm not a Batman guy, and those are some of my favorite games of all time. It goes, it's like a rated uh, PG-13, a rated R version of the animated series. Like Arkham Asylum is, it, it is forever one of one of the top yeah. games of all time far and beyond one of the best batman stories not in a comic book is in these games and then this game's kind of just uh why and then the arkham knight as a character is interesting like he should be really cool but from the outset it's i, I know who that is that's gonna yeah, be you're gonna Todd. find out who it is yeah and, and it's spoilers, like it ends up being who you jason think it's todd. gonna be and it's it's jason todd it's like well i mean you could have gone somewhere else with it yeah you didn't have to pick the the fucking one character who's always like, the, obviously you would ex- the, the one character you yeah. would expect it to be and they even in the story they try and like <laughs> twist it like it's not going to be who you think it is and it's like oh really maybe oh wait no it's 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 jason todd like, he's, he's oh, maybe it's yeah. dick grayson and he's gotten pissed off oh no wait nightwing's in this too isn't he yep, um, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's no no it's it's jason todd he just traded in his red hood outfit for this arkham knight outfit which looks pretty cool don't get me wrong yeah it looks but 
Every as far as the game goes, absolutely disappointing. Did not live up to the other games in the series, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know if they're making another one. I hope they do. They're, I, I'm pretty sure they are. The uh, um, the story element of the Joker being in your head, they took a little bit uh, – I think they must have taken the inspiration from the Batman Beyond movie where Joker implants himself into a microchip. There are people who are hallucinating where the Joker's essentially trying to take over their minds. And he does it to Batman where the Joker's not alive in the game, but he's there taunting you. And, of course, yeah. it's voiced by Mark the Hamill. The environment changes. Fuck yeah. Like yeah. the environment, environmental changes. He fucks with you. He messes with your mind. And, and it's – it, that 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 stuff was awesome. It's just unfortunately you have to go out of that environment and get back into the fucking Batmobile and do a bunch of stupid puzzles with it. Yeah, which I, I'm gonna oof. go back and play it because I feel like I owe it to myself. Yeah, because Arkham City and Arkham Asylum were so amazing, and I played those so many times. I I just you kind of need to play the last one. Yeah, it's it, Arkham I, Origins. I want to see the ending. I'm, uh, I'm not mm-hmm. worried about that one. <laughs> no, yeah, Origins is very skippable. It's not why, done by the wh- same studio. Hold on, why is it that anytime you have a, a thing with Origins in it, it's just bad? It just turns out bad. Like you got Wolverine that. Origins, fucking awful. I'm sure it wasn't bad. It's just they not had a like, different studio make what, the game. Yeah, yeah and it, it was Rocksteady. It was right. disappointing compared to those other games. And honestly, I I, I haven't played it. I've seen friends play it and gotten their input on it and just went, yeah, I can skip this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, apparently, like, like everyone was so excited for fighting uh, Deadshot in it, and that ended up being just stupid. <laughs> Which... Did you see the, the remaster they were supposed to uh... – they were they were releasing trailers for, and it looked so shitty, like – or identical oh, and in origin? some cases – of the the uh, Arkham City and Arkham, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I know what you're talking and about. And in yeah, some yeah. cases, it looked worse. Oh, so geez. they pulled the trailer, and that's just it just it does, it's just yeah. WB right is one of those companies that uh, just like all the ones we've talked about so far, they're pretty shitty on uh, how they advertise their games and not ending up being any of what they right. sell. Right. All right. You done? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, okay. All right. So we're gonna move on to my last game. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is, in my honest opinion, one of the worst games ever made. It's Metroid Other M. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I firmly, Slap firmly, face, firmly yeah. believe this is the game that killed the Metroid franchise. This is the reason why we got Metroid Prime Federation Force last year on 3DS. Just Ugh. an utter shit game. Because, I mean, all right, so you, I talked about it in our last 10 list. Super Metroid, one of my favorite games of all time. Metroid Prime 2, another one of my favorite games of all time. Like, both of those games would easily make my top 10, maybe top 20 if I were to ever make a list like that. And this game takes the entirety of the Metroid franchise and just shits all over it. Uh, you go, you, you take Samus Aram. Samus Aram is one of the, like, one of the best characters hey. I have ever, ever had the pleasure of playing as she's a female protagonist. She's the strong, badass female. She's a boss. She, she's independent. You know, like she fucks shit up and like, she still maintains a level of femininity. You know, she's not gruff, but like she's a total badass. Like, and, and then they turn her into this little like teeny bopper. They, well, not, not teeny angsty, bopper. PTSD, angsty. Yeah. Like really emotional, Wreck, just like, like she's not this hardened character that you would. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Because be. I mean, in all the games leading up to this, she doesn't display any of that. They just she's just alienated. She's her a stoic, completely. stoic badass who just takes the weight of the world on her shoulders and fucking bears it like a boss. And then you turn her into the, uh, just your prototypical damsel in distress. I, okay, I could maybe see some PTSD from some of the crazy shit she's had to deal with, but I could never, never in a million years ever see her freezing up when she sees Ridley. She would look at that motherfucker, stare him down, and say, I'm going to fuck you up. She's killed him like 40 times already. Right. There's I mean, no excuse. Yeah. And, and like that whole thing and the way she's pleading to Adam, which Adam, I'm actually fine with him as a person, as a character in her, her life. Because that was one of her first COs, and he treated her with respect. Because uh, you see that in Metroid Fusion, where she's reminiscing about him, and um, so like, okay, he's fine, but the way they did that whole interaction, it it just it ruins so much for me. And 
you you take this game. It has a terrible storyline. The voice acting is all the right. Sh- well, the story was so was so bad and convoluted yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and misplaced that then that they had to remove Prime. From the, the which the which plot line. I fucking hate because like I said Prime Prime Two, uh, they're like they're such amazing games it's they almost... really are like they they represent the best transition I've seen of a game going from two D to three D yeah like I oh, yeah. I can't I cannot for the life of me think of another game that went from two D to three D that did it as beautifully and as gracefully as Metroid did from. Whatever if, game to Prime, it's like it's amazing. If I'm remembering right, at some point in Other M, she says she talks about how it hurt be how this is like her first mission out, right, or Made something no like that. Sense. And it's how, wait, wait, then this is like the fifth game. It's like it's I don't know when this on. I don't even know where it, I don't even know where it was supposed to fall in the timeline. Like the original impression was at the end of the timeline. Oh, okay, cool. But why is she? Why is she a whiny like? Yeah, like no, she's not raised by the fucking Chozo or whatever they're called. That's for goddamn sure. I mean, she yeah, like like you. Her story is she was abandoned, she was orphaned, and know that feel. She, she was fucking raised by Chozos, which were. The <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh. <laughs> no, I'm totally <laughs> laughing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like she was raised by the Chozos. She was given cyber these awesome you know cybernetic suit where they they made it specifically for her mm-hmm. so that she could take advantage of their technology you know they were benevolent awesome beings and they raised an amazing woman in her and then you get to other m and it's like who the fuck are you you're not oh, saying yeah. this iran one of the most powerful badasses in the galaxy to this simpering whining like she just... should be this she should uh, be this respected figure right yeah and she's taking orders from dipshits. Yeah, complete and being, morons. And being, you know, like, subjected to, like, I'm the man, you're the fucking, you're, you're the, the, you're just a pain in the ass woman. Do right. what I say. Yeah. Follow my orders. It, it's just bad. In the story. It's so bad. So, I mean, I, 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 I can't, I don't want to say any more. Because if I keep going, it'll be like I'll just rant for an hour. Yeah, it's almost like they wanted to ruin the character. Yeah, I, what, like I said, like, that's why I firmly believe this this ruined Metroid. This this what killed Metroid. This one game. Yeah, like that's why we got Metroid Prime Federation Hunters rather than an actual fucking Metroid game. So for it, me, you know, that's all I'm going to say. It was it was just a bad game. It was a bad storyline. I I guess the controls were kind of okay. I I I can't even I. I hated it. I hate the whole game. Yeah. I hate everything it is, everything it stands for, and what it did to Metroid. So I, I'm done. I don't want to say anymore. So uh, why, don't, <laughs> yeah, right. why don't we move on to your last game, Ron? Right on. I, I <clears throat> had some trouble coming up with a third game because only a few times in my life have I ever been like so excited and have have looked looked forward to a game so much that I could possibly be disappointed to such an extent that it would merit being on a list like this. And that's only happened a few times. Uh, So I don't know. I just, it popped in my head a game that disappointed me. This isn't like one of my favorite series of all time or anything like that. It's just a game that I was really looking forward to based on the previous game and the franchise that let me down. Uh, Silent Hill Downpour. Uh, like, I've always loved the Silent Hill franchise. I've, I'm a horror guy, Resident Evil, Silent Hill. Right, yeah. All that shit. And, uh, I just randomly picked up Silent Hill Homecoming one day, and I fucking loved that game. Right. Like, they, uh, an American developer got a hold of it, they handed it over to them, they basically Americanized it. Right. They... You were more empowered, like there was more it was there was more combat in the game, yeah, you weren't helpless, right. I just loved the game uh i really I really dug it one of the one of the best, most vivid memories in gaming I've ever had was from homecoming, where towards the latter part of the game, you go through this section where you you know and you've seen if you've seen the movies, you see it how like the the siren goes off and it transitions into the other world 
right. becomes like this really shitty version of Silent Hill. You basically <laughs> descend into hell for like ten minutes, slowly going down and through this level, descending into hell. Uh, so yeah, if if anyone hasn't played that game, go back and play that. If only just to experience that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Downpour was the follow-up to Homecoming. I was pretty excited for it. Uh, they jumped way too far into action territory. Uh, in my opinion, it had a ton of technical issues. The frame rate was bad. The graphics were worse than in Homecoming. Uh, the environments were big. Like, you, you could roam around for miles and miles and miles, but they were really dull. Uh, they tried to integrate like player choice. Yeah, but uh, they didn't really change things a whole lot. Melee combat was clunky as fuck. Right, like yeah. block attack, block attack, repeat that process over and over and over. It was hard to shoot with any accuracy in the fucking game, and ammo was super scarce. Weapons degrade really quickly. You'll start a fight with one weapon and finish the same fight with a different one almost every time. Most of the time, you just oh. you're just <laughs> and you so spend bad. most of your time just wandering around Silent Hill in the rain. Oh, that looks cool. That house looks fucked up. I'm gonna walk up to that house and see what's in there. And there's just nothing. Most of the time <laughs> <laughs> was my experience. <laughs> so, nope, can't go in there. Oh, what the fuck's that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I might be giving it a hard time because Homecoming was like not this triple A fucking super polished game right but i mean you could say that about almost all of them but they still had their charm and they were still yeah games it was i dug it a lot and when i popped in downpour after playing it for a few hours i was just so i i played through it just because i remember thinking i was so disappointed that game was when i saw the trailers like i for i had to go back and look it up because i didn't even remember it existed i was like i remember the home game but what what the fuck was this is this the one where you look for your kid again or and i was like holy shit i remember this this is you play as this guy he's being like transferred from one prison to the other and your bus crashes in silent hill and yeah it's like an utterly forgettable Silent Hill game. stuff happens. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it, it, there's no hook like there is with other Silent Hills yeah. where you kind of feel for the character. Like, I want to save my wife, my girlfriend, my daughter, my, yeah. my whatever the fuck it is. And in that game, it's just, hey, you're just a dude who fucking crashes. <laughs> the story was like, I, I don't, I, I'd have to go back and look it up. I don't even remember what the it, fuck the story was. It's just unremarkable. Really yeah. But yeah, I, I just didn't connect with this one, with that one, like I did with Homecoming, like, you could probably get Homecoming for like five dollars at GameStop. <laughs> Much and better investment. Yeah. If you if you like if you love Silent Hill and you love horror games, like I cannot recommend that game enough. I'm sure a lot of a lot of you guys have not played that game. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I know I've never played it. All right. That it's not like this. This it's not a a huge name or whatever, but mm-hmm. it's just a game that popped in there. I didn't have a whole lot of them. It's just it's sad to see that franchise just go downhill the way it did. Yeah, and that one was the the last straw. That one it, that one essentially killed killed things for mm-hmm. Silent Hill. All right. So my last game is one that's uh contentious as a pick. Um and I see where people are coming from. Uh my last game is Fable 2. Uh when uh, I picked up an uh, an Xbox the, the original one. Uh, I hadn't really, when Fable was coming out, I didn't hear much of the hype. Like, I caught a little tail end of it. Um, but what I heard was, this is going to be, you know, it's going to be a great RPG. And I picked it up after, like, weeks after the game came out, and I fell in love with the original Fable. Absolutely loved it. Um, from beginning to end, I thought that it was one of my favorite RPGs I had ever. It, it still yeah. is one of my favorite. Fable, RPGs. you can still go back and play that yeah. game, and it holds up. I've purchased it multiple times. Yep. It's another one of those games that, when it comes out on some, like a new console or a new uh, or on PC remastered, it's like I'm picking it up and I'm playing through a most, if not all, of the game, and it's just it's fun. Um, I thought uh, I, I I honestly love that game. So when Fable Two was announced. And Peter Molyneux got up there and started talking about 
all the things he's going to do with this game, which apparently, granted, is much less than the shit he talked about for, for the first Fable, uh, I was bought it hook, line, and sinker. I was 100% like, yes, I cannot wait. I downloaded every single uh, development video on the Xbox 360. So did I. Uh, there were lots of them. Every single one I watched like, oh, my God, I can't wait so much. Uh, oh, watched the E3 announcement for the right, game right. where he talked about it, where the screen dies halfway through. <laughs> and he has to, he's like, oh, that's not supposed to happen. Uh, so anyway, greatest RPG ever. Uh, I watched <laughs> no. everything he said about the game, all the promises that were made for the first game he was going to deliver on this time. Uh, he was going to deliver on an engaging experience. You get a fucking dog, which is so awesome. And then <laughs> I love that fucking dog. Thank I do you very much. I played the game and I'm like, okay, it's, it's fable one and a little bit more. And I'm having, I'm like, okay, this is good. This is good. This is where's where's the new stuff? Where's where's it supposed to deliver with all this open world? Where's oh, I can jump over a fence this time. Awesome. And then you realize that it's not really that much bigger than the original Fable. The oh, the promises of being an open world never pan out. Most of the game is still a lot like Fable 1 where you're going through a path in an area and you fight enemies from the beginning of the path to the end. Uh the level system is Incre- it's similar. It's barely expanded upon from the first fable, and it's almost the same. Where if halfway, like a part of the way through the game, you see a thing and go, "I know exactly what I need to upgrade to get that thing." So you max out your strength stat or your stamina stat, whichever it was, so you can get that thing early on. The it, the story starts out promising. I loved the beginning of that story where you're street urchin. Um, there are no more heroes. That you are essentially the – you have that lineage in you and you have to be brought up to be a hero. And then halfway through that just kind of dies off and it stops being interesting. You go and find these other characters, only one of which is a decent character. The uh, the others are uninspired, boring characters. Instead of being a game where you're going to adventure with them, you meet them, and they're like, all right, we'll see you later, and they just fuck off, and you never see them. <laughs> so for like halfway through the game, I know, you'll Ron. see them fighting on, enemies. Dude. You can do it. You can make it. it, is, it uh, honestly, it was a game where I was so, so excited for. The story ends essentially with red, green, blue choice, where you don't have a boss fight. I can't I, I don't quite remember if you kill the boss with a quick time event, or the, the the like the big bad evil guy. If you or you just hit A and he dies, or if he commits suicide. The story is utterly forgettable up until that point. The most interesting character is the douchebag who shoots well. Um but it's like it was sold by, by um Molyneux as this amazing experience that your choices would be such a huge influence on the world, and it wasn't there. The the aging, you would a- see your character age over time. No, nope, it jumps from one part of the story to the next, and your character's a little bit older, which is the same the way it was done in the first Fable. There's a jump in time where you go somewhere, and you're just an old man when the game picks up again. It It honestly, it's not a bad game in itself, but nowhere near lived up to the hype that it was sold as. Oh, God, that was the hardest <laughs> fucking thing I've ever had to do. Ron disagrees. Sit He's... there. I am, for the sake of time, I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm just. i just going to say I think Luke's out of his fucking mind. Okay, and okay. And I strongly disagree. Okay, that's that's fine, man. Let's just all agree to disagree. I respectfully disagree. Because like, this, this whole debate raged on in our oh, Facebook yeah. group chat. I mean, I can go longer For, like, game. nine I hours. Just, I had... That I had a lot and, harder than I expected it to be. <laughs> it just, I mean, remember, this is all opinion-based, so you can think he's wrong, but you can't prove he's yeah, wrong. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's... It, like, I get it if people... I, I Like I said, I didn't know about the hype before the first Fable. Um, but Peter Molyneux is an asshole. Let me put it out there. As, like, if we say fuck Konami, fuck Peter Molyneux. He's he like sold the, Fable 1 as this amazing right. fucking, you could cut trees and they would grow and you'd see that shit. Yep, he did uh, Fable 1 and, and then, he didn't deliver. And he didn't deliver. But you can't not tell me close. that people did not still 
buy what he said. Fabled when well, Fable Two was coming out, they lot. did. Apparently, some people did. Oh no! Go back and watch X Play. Go okay, back okay, and okay. watch up, all of these previews for this game. This is a bonus. This is bonus pod. The, the yeah. great Fable debate of 2017. <laughs> we'll do that another day, though. Uh, but yeah, Fable Two. It did not live up to what it said. He shit on the first Fable to promote Fable Two. He did the same thing to promote Fable Three, which was even worse. But Fable Two is what broke me on ever believing Peter Molyneux. As soon as Fable 3 was coming out, I was like, he's lying. Fable 3 is going to be shit. And it was. Fable 3 was, I will, I can, I wish, I can get behind that. Fable 3 was, I was so disappointed. Yeah, I wish I knew to temper <laughs> oh, some geez. expectations with Fable 2, but I didn't at the time, and Fable 2 just, it, ugh. It wasn't terrible, but it was nowhere near what he sold it as. Fable 2 would have been a much better game if Peter Molyneux didn't open his fucking mouth. Luke was just a starry-eyed, you know, naive oh, young yeah. man. But, I mean, I know I was not the only one. Go back and watch videos after okay. Fable 2's release. All right, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that another day. I hurt yeah. my soul. Let's not, let's not, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Ron. Shit on your childhood, Ron. <laughs> okay, but okay. Every, every single word, I'm like, oh, oh, they're just, like, slapping me in the face. It, it's so hard for Ron. Like I said, there are you that's one of my favorite games ever. All right, And I get right. it. If I someone shit on the first one, I'd feel the same DLC way. DLC they ever released, I was, like, bummed when they weren't releasing anymore. Oh, I, yeah. you're, you're, I'm not saying it, but... I uh, bought that, too. Yeah. All right, well. I had to get the fucking dog back by buying DLC. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was interesting. And like I said, you see Ron's face. Um, oh. <laughs> All right. So now... Okay, so there's our, there's our first nine games. Yep. We're through all that. And so this is, of course, the ten list. And now we got one game we're all going to come together on. And um, which is kind of hard because half the time one of us or all of, two of us hadn't played the game. Yeah, like it's one of those things where we all play similar enough games that we can like play games with each other, but we also play such widely varying genres that you know two of my games, like like two of each each game that we like two of each game that we mentioned rather are like one of us one of us didn't play them. Yeah, so it's like okay. Like I didn't play Fable, I didn't play any of the Fable games because I wasn't I didn't know an Xbox. So, anyway, the one game we are all going to come together on, I think, is Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the games. You know, it was in development hell for fourteen years. It went from developer to developer, and it what what we ended up getting was just a pile of dog shit with cat turds and fucking bullshit just mixed all together and this it's, it's just a, it's just terrible duke nukem getting blowjobs and slapping titties and chewing bubble gum yeah. i mean and, which I'm, should be awesome a, it should a, be it's totally be. broken game yeah. right i mean you got glitches abound oh, you've got God. bad one-liners edgy edge edgelord bullshit you know you, 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 it's not a good game not even like by duke nukem standards i mean look at duke nukem 3d it's that's all it is it's just it's just it's just poop jokes and tits and whatever. But then you get to Duke Nukem Forever, and it's like they take that to an extreme that I don't think worked well for them at all. No. It was just – it's just 14 years of development did not help this game at all. No. Uh, going oh, from developer no. to developer yeah, where it's like 10 different games slapped together, duct taped together is – flimsily as possible. They, uh, it I kinda, feel like at one point there was a good game there. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like at the beginning of the game, anyways, it had a nice sense of fun. Mm-hmm. But, the, but there was a nice sense of fun there, but the game was just Throwing terrible. poop at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. It was, Throwing it was, shit at the wall. It was, oh, which it was, was one of the best parts of the game, which should speak a lot about it. I, it's, it's definitely one of those games that you expect more from. Yeah. Because, I mean... Duke Nukem 3D and and all its iterations. I I love Duke Nukem 3D. Mm-hmm. I totally loved the Duke Nukem 3D. I loved the Duke Nukem 64 port. I liked Duke Nukem Zero Hour, which was the third person version of Duke. I loved those games. Those were I I feel that those were genuinely good games. But then you get to something like Duke Nukem Forever, and it's what is this? It's, what are you doing? Uh... It's interesting in a standpoint that you can play that game and see different 
like ages of the way first person shooters were developed yeah. because of how long the cycle was and the fact that they they, they didn't finish any piece of the game they just stuck it together yeah. so it's like i remember this from the 90s i remember mm-hmm. that from the early 2000s oh that's like uh you know the 2010 first it's it's funny in that sense it's just so bad yeah i never played any of the old duke, duke yeah. games so i was i was really like I was really curious, and I really, really wanted to to play it and see what all the fucking fuss was about. Right, that's the only reason but, why uh, I bought it for five bucks on Steam. So I was yeah. like, I was excited to you know play as this character for the first time, and uh, who's yeah, known for being like one of the it best didn't take in- long. interesting characters. It didn't take long no. for me to yeah. like. I can't even play this. I can't even. I can't even like. <laughs> it's so towards funny. the end of the 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 first area, you get past the first area where you get shrunk and mm-hmm. you're driving around like uh one of the f- the first like boss battles after that i st- i think the first boss b- after the first boss battle is like nah just I done can't it's, do it it's yeah. lame they, it, it could have been so much more um but it just between the development and then being bought by gearbox who is a company that will buy uh an unfinished bullshit just mess have, give it off to another developer to stick it together so that they can fucking put a price tag on it, promote the hell out of it, and then push it out and sell it. And then blame the other studio yeah, for all the problems. Yeah, and then blame other people for the problems. Right, like, it's it's it's, it's pathetic and I hate it. Yeah. Um, like I said, if Borderlands 2 hadn't been successful, Gearbox wouldn't be a thing. I firmly yeah. believe that. Like, that is their bread and butter. Yeah, I, oh, mean, I no. They yeah. can keep selling <laughs> shit. Though unfortunately, uh, yeah, which because is what of done. Eventually because of Borderlands too. Yeah. Yeah. They got they got lucky with that Borderlands with those with the, with the Borderlands games. Like, yeah, and they've milked that pretty yeah. much as much as they can. And yeah, that's where they're I mean, they can do no more with it until they release a second game. And if that one isn't like doesn't live up to people's expectations, then I don't know what yeah, else see, that studio is going to do. Borderlands Two to this day is the only game. Where I've bought every single piece of DLC, and I'm not counting stuff like Skyrim, where there's only three pieces of DLC and they're all expansions. It's like I've bought all the skins, I've bought all the heads, I bought a all shit ton of DLC I've bought for that game. all that dumb shit, <laughs> and I love that game. Uh, you know, it's another one of those games which is top top ten, top twenty easily. Mm-hmm. It's it's just so fantastic. But you sit there and you look at a pile of shit like Duke Nukem, and it's like, how the fuck? Can they slap their name on this when they've got a game like Borderlands and Borderlands Two? And I that's mean, what I don't get. Why do you want you see, your name on that garbage? Right. If you see a game developed by Gearbox and it doesn't have Borderlands written on it, you don't want to buy Stay it. Stay away. Yeah, it's probably just going to be shit. They just re-released Bulletstorm for fucking full price. Like, yeah. are you shitting me? Forty bucks. That was fine. a Gearbox yeah. game. I thought that was a Cliffy pretty B sure. game. Uh, originally, yeah, but I'm pretty sure Gearbox is who re- re-released it. I'm not. I'm yeah, not. I could maybe I'm. I know, I wrong, know but that. I know that game is bullshit. That it's been re-released for full fucking. I know because Cliffy B was like straying off from Gears of War. Yeah, and did the the original. So, um, fun game though. I like the original. Just Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. it was it was a toss up between a few games for this this last one. We could have went with any, but yeah, what I better mean, game than Duke Nukem Forever? We, Something we, we've to all finish off on. Right, we were we were also discussing Resident Evil Six. So let's go ahead and give and that Fallout an Four and, and Fallout, Fallout 4. Four. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, well, that's another episode for us. We want to thank you guys for listening. Thanks for hanging out with us and listen. You know, just let us ramble on this shit. Um, so we don't really have much more. Just catch us again next Sunday, same time, same channel as we always are. Soon we should have a uh, at least a Facebook page put up. Some other places you can hit us up at right. uh, links Working. to Twitter, Snap, uh, whatever the on the website, Instagram. I believe I believe you can leave a, you can leave a comment if you want, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, so as we get this thing rolling, we're gonna try to get one a page going and try to get a little bit of a community going, so we can integrate some of that into our shows. Yeah, but yeah, uh, that's the plan. But for the time being, you know, feel free to leave a comment on the website if if you have any any ideas, anything improvement that we can we can make or anything you want to hear, any ideas. Go ahead and hit us up. Leave a leave a leave a message. So uh, <clears throat> that's it. Another episode of the Ungodly Geeks podcast is done. I'm yep. Joe. I'm Luke. And I'm Ron. And we're signing off. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>